Hello and welcome to a LinkedIn Live that I didn't think you'd be doing. And yeah, not all fancy. It's it's not a, a business conversation. It's a it's a life conversation. Um, so I wanted to share some something that happened yesterday that I have lots of thoughts on. Um, but mainly what I wanted to do is share the story just to to bring some gravity to life, to bring some gravity to a lot of things that I talk about on a daily basis because I'm I'm living it today. Um, so yesterday, well, let me back up. Last week, um, I has sustained an injury that I thought was just a torn muscle. You know, had some calf pain, swelling, whole nine yards. Um, wound up taking an ER visit late last week. They dismissed it as a torn tendon and, and, and a ruptured um muscle, even though there was a, a tremendous amount of swelling, I went in because I was concerned it was either a muscle tear or a DVT, uh, which is deep vein thrombosis, which is basically a blood clot in your leg. Um, dismissed, sent home, you tore a muscle, no big deal. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Allison. Um, and so days went by and then yesterday was just, it just, it, it just kept hurting you know, really was in a lot of pain. And so here I am thinking I have an orthopedic injury. So I went to an orthopedic walk-in clinic. They did an x-ray, couldn't find anything. Doctor said, I'm, I'm concerned because the consistency and persistency of the swelling that there could be a threat of a DVT. So why don't we send you over to an ultrasound, get that scanned and see what happened. Um, you know, those moments when it's probably about five minutes, but it feels like an hour. Um, so I had my ultrasound on my leg. They scanned my whole leg. Um, and then the, the, the tech left. And of course you, <laughs> I asked the question and, you know, sometimes you ask questions that you don't necessarily want the answer to, but you want to know, you want to ask anyway. And so as he was scanning, he wasn't talking much. And I said, do you see any indication of a DVT? And the response I got was, well, I'd, I'd rather let the doctor take a look at it. You know, when, when you get a response like that, you know, something's not right. So it was confirmed um, that I did not have a muscle tear or a tendon tear, that I had a very large blood clot in my leg that runs from my thigh down past my knee. Um, had I not gone in yesterday, which subsequently they sent me to another ER, different hospital, um, and Menorah Medical Center here in, in Kansas City in Overland Park, my love and respect to you all. Your staff is phenomenal. You did an amazing job taking care of me. But um, I, I went to the ER, you know, had some blood work done. Um, they they had the, the CD of all the images. They confirmed what they saw too. Um, they ran a scan of my chest and found a couple small blood clots in my lungs too, which that that's the concerning part. Um, and if you don't know anything about DVTs, let me give you a quick crash course. The blood clot forms in your leg, especially because it's tied into the arteries, the higher it gets in your leg. And this is what I was shared, was told last night, that if part of the clot like breaks off, it could travel through the bloodstream, go to your lungs and your heart and, and kill you. I mean, and it's instantly, it's it's rapidly fatal. Um, so there I was, a uh, seven hour medical journey yesterday, figuring out that I was facing and could have potentially wound up in a fatal situation. Um, the fact that I went in yesterday to get it looked at and, and, and acknowledged and, and get some treatment started was truly life-saving. And so if you know me for a minute, you know that I try to find the silver lining. I try to find the lesson in everything. And I had a lot of time to think because, you know, as with especially busy, busy medical situations with all, all, all respect due to our healthcare workers, like something happens and then there's this delay because they're treating other patients or have to run tests or get some, get a second thought. Um, so I had a lot of time to think. And I kept thinking to myself, like, what, what is it about this that I want to take away? And what can I share with others to inform them? Because typically the DVTs come through lots of sitting, like pilots are really prone to them. Truck drivers are really prone to them. People that sit for super long durations of time. Um, I'm not that person. And so this is kind of a, this is a surprise diagnosis. This is a surprise scenario. And um, so I'm not here to, to educate you about DVTs and what to do and what not to do, because I don't know why I got one. Um, 
But what I did learn were a few things, and this will be a lot less emotional. I just shared this message on Instagram, so all the a lot of the crying is gone. I'll get a little bit of emotional <laughs> tie to this, but um, I wanted to share this on LinkedIn because I think here more than any other platform and here more than any other audience, the, my professional network needs to hear what I'm about to say. Um, number one, be very thankful for those people around you. You don't realize how truly supported you are until, so, unfortunately, sometimes something happens. Um, and I can't stress enough, and I didn't share this on LinkedIn last night, so I'm not, you know, uh, my, my, more, my more personal networks got wind of this. Um, the outpouring of support was, was overwhelming, absolutely overwhelming. Um, people supporting me, sending me great messages, some people shared their stories of their run-ins with DVTs and blood clots. So, um, a lot of, a lot of really emotional connect, you know, emotionally driven connection last night and today. Um, but I say that to say that you should always appreciate those around you. Um, if anything, the gravity of what could have happened made me as much as I already appreciate you all makes me appreciate you even more. Um, so that's lesson one. Um, lesson two, fill your days with happiness. You know, there, there's the, there's the, the cliche saying that life is too short. You're not promised tomorrow. And I think sometimes we hear that and we're like, yay, I'm going to go do the thing and I'm going to go take up the hobby. And, and then sometimes we do it and sometimes we don't, but I'm here to tell you yesterday was that day for me. I'm today is a gift to me because last night could have ended badly. You know, last night could have been a lot worse than, than it wound up being. Um, and so when I say life is short, when I say you're not promised tomorrow, I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Um, for those of you that are not doing something that you love, and I'm not saying we should all throw up in arms and abandon our jobs or anything like that. I, what I'm saying is that I want you to take a hard look at your life. What are you doing? What are you doing for joy? What are you doing that fills you? What are you doing that brings you immense fulfillment and grat you know, gratification? Because life is too short. And if you get to, you know, I, I thought to myself yesterday, or last night, as I was, you know, sitting in the ER, um, what if tonight is the last night? Just, you know, as you're thinking, as you're sitting there waiting for test results to come back, you start thinking weird, random, morbid stuff. And I thought to myself, like, what what if tonight is the last night? What if it was the 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 curtain call? Um and I've lived a very, very fun life and a very fulfilled life. And I have a lot of things I still want to do. I still have a lot of life left in me. Um, but at the same time, like, I don't know that I can say that I've fulfilled everything that I wanted to. And so I challenge you all to, to look at it the same way. What if today was the last day? Are you doing what you love to do? Are you, are you living a fulfilled life? And if not, what would you change? I, you know, I talk about life audits all the time. Um, and stopping because we get so busy and we get so crazy with our calendars and our to-do lists and everything else that we just sometimes don't take the time to just sit and reflect on what's going on. And I think that's the most critical exercise that you can do, period. That all you need to do is spend a few minutes here and there and just sit and think, is this where I want to be? Is this what I want to do? And if not, what am I going to do to change it? Because we all can determine our lives. We all can determine our paths. Um, Mel Robbins posted something recently about your, it's never too late to reinvent yourself. So take a hard look at who you are and what you're doing now. And if you need to audit some things, if you need to replace some things, if you need to go a different path, if you need to reinvent yourself, do it, please. Um, so that was, that was my, my, my second lesson. My third lesson, and I posted about this the other day and, and it, and it hit me harder than it ever hit me has ever hit me last night. And that is, and I'm going to have to try to watch my mouth because we try to keep LinkedIn appropriate, is that I feel like whenever you're moving towards a big goal, whenever you're trying to achieve something, whenever something is going in the right direction, whenever something is getting really close, especially if it's something really good and it's going to help other people, like the, the expansive positivity about what you're about to do or accomplish or, or seek out has an immense and profound effect of positivity on everybody around you. I feel like there's this other force that's trying to keep you from doing it. 
and I will say that through busyness and work and not taking care of my own schedule the way I, I preach that you should, you know, I, I'm, I'm eating my own words here a little bit. Um, but I, I, I laughed last night cause I'm like, I must be up to something really big because if you're putting me in the ER with a freaking blood clot in my, in my leg, then you're really trying to slow me down. But I will say this is that I, I wound up in the ER because of my own decision. And this is where I, I bleed into no pun intended. I bleed into the next lesson and that is take care of yourself. I think that is that if, if any other message comes through in this, in this ramble that I'm giving you right now is please take care of yourself between myself. And again, like, I'm not trying to say I don't take care of myself because I feel like I do. And I don't know why this came about. So I'm not attributing it to any kind of bad decisions, but I did listen to my body. I did say, okay, I've got to push everything aside. I have to take care of me first. Like something's going wrong. And that goes for your physical health. That goes for your mental health. That goes for your fatigue. I know that you're working hard. I know that you've got big goals. I know that you think that you're unstoppable and that you're immortal at times, but you're not. Now you are strong. Yes, I will say that all day long. I am a strong and resilient SOB and so are you. But you have to take care of yourself. You have to listen to yourself. I've gotten a couple messages today about people now realizing based off of what I went through that they need to check in with themselves more. And I applaud that. And if it takes me going to the ER for you to stop and slow down and check in on your own health, I'll take that too. If it saves somebody else, if it helps somebody's mental or physical health, I will, I will carry that. I'm not a martyr by any means, but I sure will sacrifice a trip to the ER to bring more realization to your life all day long. My sons are making a movie in the other, in the other room. If, if you hear any voices or weird noises, that's what it is. Um, so one, understand that your goals are yours and they're big and there will be something that tries to stop you from them. And if it means enough to you and it's positive enough and it's going to have a positive enough effect on your life and the life of others, something will try to slow you down. Don't give up. Walking into taking care of you, taking better care of yourself. Listen to your body. If you're exhausted, get rest. If you're mentally struggling, ask for help. Raise your hand. You know, I, I, when I was sitting in the ER, I was flipping through social because, again, I was trying to keep my mind off of things. And I saw that I don't watch the show and I don't know the actor's name, but there was a young man at 25, you know, actor in the show that had committed suicide. You, and everybody says, we didn't see this coming. So who, who has the next breaking point? Who in, who in our networks has a breaking point? If it's you, please get help. Please raise your hand. There's nothing wrong with it. There are resources abound. There is support abound. And you are needed and you are valued. And I don't care if anything else comes through in this message. Please, please take care of yourself. Please get help. Please raise your hand and ask for help. Zero shame. Zero, absolutely zero shame in that. And I got too passionate and thought about that one. I forgot the last one. Um, but we are, we are resilient people to our core, each and every one of us. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what's, what, what you're battling. You are stronger than anything you're, that's being put in front of you. I'm stronger than this. I'm going to beat this. I'm going to overcome this. I'm going to battle this back and I'm going to be fine because I got a lot of great things to do. I've got a lot of great people to help. I've got a lot of, you know, presentations and conversations to have motivation to give inspiration to deliver empowerment to help because that's what I was put on this earth to do. And I'm sure as hell not going anywhere. So, um, maybe a bit emotional, maybe a bit too casual and dress for LinkedIn. I don't care. I really don't care. I, I want you all to understand that you are worthy. You are valuable. You are needed and you are able to do whatever you want to do, but please take care of yourself and please take the time to realize that your life should be fulfilled and then be, be overloaded with happiness. And if it's not, it's up to you to make that change. So, um, again, thank you to each and every one of you who reached out through other channels. Um, hopefully this resonated with at least one person out there to, to make a change to, for their happiness, for their health, whatever it is. 
that's the point of me doing this today. It's not me looking at me. Um, I do want to say thank you to my, my spotlight friends, um, for all their support. It's been amazing. Um, but I just, I, I couldn't not say something. I could not encourage you to do better for yourself because you deserve that. And I know that I'm going to be looking at this in a different way. I know that I'm going to be doing everything I can to take care of my health. I know that I'm going to be doing everything I can to, to maximize this, this new path and this new mindset because there's some big stuff, big, big stuff coming. And, um, there's nothing or, or nobody that's going to stop it because it needs to be heard. It needs to be talked about. It needs to be shared because people need to hear more messages like I love sharing. So um, back on the mend, I got to go pick up my medicine. So I love you all. Um, I hope somebody somewhere changes something. And, and I hope you find fulfillment and happiness in anything and everything you do. Take care. Be well. I wish you nothing but health and happiness. Time to go beat this thing.